I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be his than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or land. I'd rather be led by his nail-pierced hand than to be a king of a vast domain and be held in sin's red ways. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world could afford. I'd rather have Jesus than men's applause. I'd rather be faithful to his dear call. I'd rather have Jesus than worldwide fame. I'd rather be true to his holy name than to be a king of a vast from the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. We saw that here in Mark chapter 1 and verse 1, we have the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We contrasted that with uh, Philippians 4.15, where Paul said that there was a beginning of a gospel uh, when he was in Macedonia and so on. We saw that the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ during his earthly ministry, preached by him and concerning him during his earthly ministry, was not the same gospel as the gospel of the grace of God preached by the Apostle Paul during the Acts period. This is just another case of many places in the Bible where you have to have more than one gospel. The Lord Jesus Christ, when he talked about his death, burial, and resurrection, Peter took him and began to rebuke him in uh, Matthew chapter 16. Uh, Luke 18, when the Lord talked about his death, burial, and resurrection, the disciples, even after they had preached the gospel of the kingdom, did not know, didn't understand, and it was hid to them, that Jesus would die, be buried, and raised again the third day. Now, that's not hidden in the gospel that we preach. These are different gospels. Now, in verse number 2 of Mark chapter 1, the Bible says, As it's written in the prophets. And here Mark quotes two prophets, in the, at least two in the Old Testament. I believe he's quoting from Malachi and from Isaiah. He doesn't say who they are, but all you have to do is go back and check them. Verse number 2, he quotes from Malachi chapter 3 and verse 1. Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. And then in verse 3, here you've got the second prophet he's quoting. He said it's written in the prophets, plural. So now here's the second prophet, verse 3. And he quotes here from Isaiah chapter 40. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, Make his paths straight. So that we have two prophecies. Now we saw in our study last week that if you were to take and do a synthetic Bible study here and show how these words fit together in verse 2 and verse 3, uh, you have, I send at the beginning of verse number 2. It's written in the prophets, Behold, I send, that is, God sends someone. Down at the end of verse 3, John the Baptist is crying, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. And so the Lord, the way is prepared for the Lord. And so I say that the words, I send, that these go with, they work with the Lord down at the end. Then back up in verse 2, he said, I send my messenger. Now that's John the Baptist. God is sending John the Baptist. 
Well, John the Baptist, my messenger, he is also, in verse number 3, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. So my messenger and one crying go together. John was, came crying in the wilderness. He just a voice crying in the wilderness, the messenger sent by God to prepare the way of God. All right? Then also, thy face and thy way, these two go together, and, of course, these refer to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, so the Word of God says, I'm sending, God is sending. And we see that, we saw in our study over there, that when you take Malachi chapter 3 and verse 1 and read that, you've got capital L, capital O, uh, small O, small R, small D in your King James Bible. Turn over to uh, Malachi and look at Malachi chapter 3 and verse 1. God said, Behold, I send my messenger, and he shall be prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. So the Lord is going to come to his temple. Now, that word there is the same word that's used for many people in the Old Testament as well as God. For example, David is called by this title, an Adon or a master or, an, or an, a one who is over others. David is called that. Kings are called that. Well, God is also called that because He's one who owns things and who is over things. Context always must determine what you're talking about or who you're talking about in. Now, so the Word of God in Malachi, just looking at the text itself, he said, I send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom ye seek. In other words, in that verse by itself, I would not be able to necessarily prove that that was God coming down to this earth if it was just left there. But by taking Malachi 3, 1 and seeing where it's the Lord, L, little O, little R, little D is going to come, I can go over to Isaiah, and with both of these prophets, just like Mark said, as it is written in the prophets, with both of these, I can see that the Lord who sins is Jehovah, and the Lord who is coming is Jehovah too. And it's just another emphasis on the fact that there is one God, but He is manifest to us in three persons. God the Father, and here God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, and here we're looking at God the Father and God the Son. So that God is saying, I am sending God. So that God the Father is there, and God the Son comes down to this earth. Look at Isaiah chapter number 40. Isaiah chapter number 40. So Mark ties two prophecies together. One prophecy that the title there could be, if you're just going by the Word itself, well, that's used of created beings. But it's also used of God in the sense that He's a master and He's the owner of things. But in Isaiah chapter 40, by putting both of these together, Isaiah and Malachi, He does two things. He shows that the Lord Jesus Christ is God. Look at verse number 3. The voice of Him that crieth in the wilderness... Prepare ye the way of the, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Jehovah. In other words, the Lord is going to come to His temple. Adonai, He's going to come to His temple. Well, He, John the Baptist, goes preaching and He is preparing the way of Jehovah. It is Jehovah, the Lord, who is coming to His temple. So Mark shows that the Lord Jesus Christ is God. And uh, no doubt about it, by Him using both of the prophets, Malachi 3, Isaiah 40. He also does something else. He shows that this name up here can be referring to God in the Old Testament or in the New Testament. So in the King James Bible, I know that when I see capital L, small o, small r, small d. That could be God. And the context will tell me. 
So you see, there's some people who do this word game. And Jehovah's Witness got a little word game they do with you. And in the Old Testament, they, they every place where uh, Jehovah's mentioned, they put Jehovah down, and then every place where you have a, you know, a capital L, small O, small R, small D, they'll make that a created being, or, or in some places they'll make that a created being. They believe Jesus was created by God the Father. They believe Jesus is a created being, and that God sent Jesus, a created being, down to this earth. Well, you take a King James Bible, and there's no way a man can miss it. Mark takes Malachi 3, Isaiah 40, and he shows that the Lord, Jehovah, is the same as the Ananai back there in uh, Malachi chapter 3 and verse 1. So the same person is coming. The person who sins, uh, he sins God the Father, he sins God the Son. And he's just as much God, the one who comes, as the one who sent him. Now... This brings up something that's uh, kind of an amazing thing. Uh, look back at Mark chapter 1 again, please. Mark chapter 1 again. Mark says in a King James Bible in Mark chapter 1 and verse 2 in the Word of God, it says, as it is written in the prophets. Now notice, plural. As it's written in the prophets. If you were to go to the rest of the Bibles and start checking them out, for example, the Revised Standard Version reads like this, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet. You see, the Revised Standard Version takes out prophets and says, as it is written, and then it adds, in Isaiah the prophet. So that the Revised Standard Version says that Mark is just quoting from one prophet, Isaiah. Now, I, I think that's an amazing thing. Uh, I think it's amazing that in the King James Bible you can take these two references and it's very clear who Mark is quoting. I mean, you can't get them mixed up. You couldn't get, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. You couldn't get that out of Isaiah. You have to get it out of Malachi. And you couldn't get, uh, verse 3, the voice of one crying in the wilderness out of Malachi. You get it out of Isaiah. You've got a quotation there from the Old Testament. Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. And the Revised Standard Version comes in and says, It was written in Isaiah the prophet. You can't find that in Isaiah the prophet. You find that in Malachi. You don't find that in Isaiah. But the Revised Standard Version has eliminated the prophets and said he's just quoting from one prophet. Not only that, but you find the same thing in the New International Version. The New International Version in Mark 1, 2 said, is written in Isaiah the prophet. New International Version. The New International Version rips the Word of God out and mutilates the Word of God there and has put in Isaiah the prophet. Somebody, someplace, didn't like Mark saying that it was written in prophets, plural. Wonder why somebody would want to do that. Wonder why somebody would want to eliminate the Malachi and separate the Malachi quotation from Isaiah by just saying it just came from one prophet in the Old Testament. I'll tell you who. Somebody that it bothered them that you could take Malachi and Isaiah together, two prophets from the Old Testament, and you don't just have Mark writing his ideas. You've got two quotations from the Old Testament. One of them is, has to do with Adonai. The other one identifies as Adonai as the same uh, one as Jehovah. Somebody didn't like that. So they had to get rid of it. So they said, it's just in Isaiah the prophet. And it kind of downgrades Mark's statement in there when he said, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face. In other words, it gives that, that statement as one like... Uh, well, that Mark just wrote it, and he did not go to the Old Testament. And everybody knows what the Jehovah's Witness, the big thing with the Jehovah's Witness is, is that there is one person who is God, and that is Jehovah, and the Lord Jesus Christ is not God. There's no such thing as God the Son. There's no such thing as God the, the Holy Spirit. They believe that He's God, uh, Jehovah, one period, one person, period, and uh, that Jesus is created, 
and that the Holy Spirit is just a force or an influence from it. And so that's why they do that. And I say there was Jehovah's Witness somewhere back there tampering with the Word of God and did not like the prophets in Mark 1 and verse 2 and changed it to say Isaiah the prophet, Isaiah the prophet, RSV, the New International Version, also good, good news for modern man. Isaiah had written. That's what it's got in there. And then the New American Standard Version has got, it is written in Isaiah. All of these follow the same line. And again, it just emphasizes what I've, what I've said for five years in this place, that all Bibles except the King James Bible comes from a corrupt source. They'll have some of the truth in them. And where they agree with the King James, that'd be the Word of God. But where they disagree with the King James Bible, they, it's an evidence that somebody tampered with them back there, and these Bibles come from that source of corruption. Not only that, but I've got my Diaglot, which is the Jehovah's Witness, what you call a uh, interlinear, you know, translation where you've got the Greek and then you've got the English right below it. And in the Jehovah's Witness, Diaglot, the thing says, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet. Jehovah's Witness got the same thing. The New American Standard Version and the Jehovah's Witness Bible agrees in Mark 1 and verse 2 in attacking the Word of God. The New International Version falls right in with them, the RSV, good news for modern man, and so on. Now, years ago, when the, new, when the Revised Standard Version came out, see, this came out in 1950, everybody had a fit. The fundamentalists had a fit because it attacked the virgin birth in Isaiah 7. And all of them just condemned the Revised Standard Version. But from 1952 till about 1960, the fundamentalists got the leaven in. So that by the time the New American Standard Version came out in 62 or 65, whenever it came out, the fundamentalists were ready to just fall right in line. And what they've got, they've got the same Bible that they had back in the 1950s. They can't see it. they got the same Bible. Why well, raise a to-do about the thing back in the 1950s? It was wrong then. It's wrong now. But they all write in. Well, you got the Jehovah's Witness, and you could put uh, probably 25 other so-called versions up here, and they'd read the same as the Jehovah's Witness Bible attacking the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ in Mark 1 and verse 2. Mark said, as it is written in the prophets. Now, you know how many folks would pick that up if you were just in, a, let's say, in a Sunday school class, and the guy was reading along, and the thing just, you know, just go over there, and, and the guy say, well, it's written in Isaiah, and just go right on. How many folks, I mean, how many of us would? You see, every word of God is pure. And that's why it's good to have a Bible with you in a study class and open up the Word of God and read the Word of God for yourself. Uh, if I miss a word, it's not because I'm, I want to or do it intentionally. It's because of my oversight or just because of my weakness or my inability. It's not because I want to. I believe every word in the King James Bible is the Word of God.